Hi, I'm really excited today because I have just given my craft room a makeover and I wanna show you exactly what I did. So today I'm doing something a little bit different. I recently decided it was time to step up my YouTube game. I wanted to be able to give you more resources, more tutorials, and more ways to be creative in your everyday life. And as a part of that, I realized I didn't really have a creative space. I have a wonderful big area upstairs in my house that has a beautiful view and it's where I do all my work. But when it comes to the arty side of things, I kind of just do it all on the couch in front of the TV or at my desk near my computer. And that's not very appealing for camera. So it became a bit of a good excuse to do some shopping. And it was actually Shane's idea, my wonderful husband, who said, you know what, we should set you up a craft desk. And so as soon as we talked about it, I started running through ideas. So I want to take you through a bit of the process of how this all came to be so that you can maybe try and do something similar at home. So first thing we did was rearrange the office. We made a big mess, a, a big mess. And we rearranged, we moved our desks near the window. We set up a new desk just for this space. And then I headed to Pinterest. I love Pinterest. And if you're not following me, you should go follow me because I have plenty of creative ideas there. One of the boards that I have is actually craft organization ideas. And so I hit up that board and I had a look at how everyone else was organizing their craft spaces for inspiration. Once I had all that inspiration, I actually took a photo of the space that we were gonna work with and I used my iPad to sketch out a bit of a draft. You see, I'm a very, very visual person and all of this was in my head somewhere, but in order to actually work out what went where, I really needed to see it on paper. That is how I work. So I drafted it all out on that. And then I realized if I wanted to get the scale right, we actually have a big whiteboard that happens to be pretty much exactly where I'm wanting to put everything. So I drew it all on the whiteboard. And eventually I realized that probably wasn't the best way because eventually we would have to move the whiteboard and that would be confusing. But it gave me at least a starting point. So I did that. And then we got to go shopping. Now I love stationery and I love spending way too much time in the stationery shops, which we don't have that many of here in Australia, but Officeworks is one. And I like to just walk the shelves and just look at all the colors and bore the rest of my family. But in saying that, I don't actually buy that much stationery. I don't actually buy that much craft stuff at all. In fact, when I first started making coloring books in 2015, I didn't even own a set of pencils. All I had was a set of Sharpies that I think I picked up on sale at Costco. And then my amazing husband, Shane, bought me my first set of Prismacolor pencils. And he actually got them sent from America from a friend because they are so much more expensive here in Australia. Eventually, a few years later, I invested in my first small set of Copic markers. And from there, I picked up a few extra things, but still haven't really bought that much stuff. So fast forward to 2020 when I decided it was time to really start providing some more tutorials for you guys. And I realized that I'm gonna need some supplies. And then I got excited and realized I'm gonna need some more supplies. So the first thing I did was bought a whole bunch of white pens. Maybe you've seen that video where I reviewed all these different white pens and it was a great excuse to just buy a whole bunch of stationery. <laughs> Since then, I've had contacts with a few businesses here in Australia and I've been back to Officeworks and I've been planning out my setup here. And as a result, I have picked up some new finds. I have finally splurged a little bit on stationery. So as a part of this video, I wanted to show you some of the things that I have picked up. So when it came to my setup, I decided I wanted to do a combination of frames and shelves and I really wanted to showcase some of my markers. So I actually posted in some Facebook groups asking for suggestions and this marker set here was what was recommended to me. I was very excited to buy it and when it arrived, I almost broke it straight away trying to assemble it, but then I had a lot of fun arranging all my Copic markers. However, I didn't really have enough Copic markers to fill it. So I think maybe that might be a good excuse to buy some more, just saying. <laughs> Um, I also decided to print some of my artwork in these frames. So these frames are just ones that I've picked up from Ikea, from Kmart. Um, I think I picked up a few from the reject shop and I just wanted to go for a mismatched look. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. 
These shelves are actually just a picture ledge from Ikea. Um, I chose them because I liked that they weren't as deep as most shelves. So I tried a few different options for storing my pencils, but in the end, I settled on these cheap cups that I just picked up from Kmart. They're just plastic, they're square, they fit the pencils really well. So I'm really happy with them. Now, Copic markers are expensive and I know not everyone can afford them. And even I sort of don't really wanna spend money on a bigger set at this point. So I decided to find out what other options were out there. And one option that I saw recommended time and time again were the Ahuhu markers. So I went and bought myself a small set. So this is a set of 40 something. <laughs> I probably should have looked that up before doing this video, but these markers have been very impressive. So they have a brush tip just like my Copics and they have a chisel tip on the other end. And I have used these on a coloring page and I was actually really impressed. I thought they were really good and I definitely recommend them as a cheap Copic alternative. I will do a video in the future comparing them side by side so that you can see how good they are. But if you're looking for something, um, you can't afford Copics, but you wanna get into the alcohol ink market, I would say absolutely go these. So a bit later on, I'm gonna put these up with my Copic markers in my wonderful unit up here. I have a bit of a color code system going on, so I'll get them in there properly later. So I also decided I wanted to try some new gel pens. So I picked up these Crayola Take Note gel pens. Um, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit underwhelmed so far, but I haven't used them much yet. So I'm gonna keep trying those out. We'll see how they work. So I've got them nice and pretty here, ready to go on my shelf. This is my stash of white pens that I mentioned earlier. Look, some of them probably shouldn't be stored up this way. I know that the paint mark is probably are better stored upside down or maybe on this side, but I kind of just like them in this cup. So they're gonna go up on my shelf. Um, the gel pens themselves, it won't matter. I mentioned that in my last video about tips on using a white gel pen that you don't have to store them sideways. You can store them upright because they are pressurized inside. The main thing is that you don't shake them or you don't hit them really hard or you don't drop them, which I discovered after doing a whole bunch of videos dropping my gel pens. So that in hindsight probably wasn't the smartest idea. So my next dilemma is how do I store my washi tape? Now I know there are a lot of different ways to do this and I've tried a few. I thought about putting them on the wall, but I thought, oh, it's probably actually a bit messy for what I want. I want something a bit neater. So I came across these little acrylic washi tape dispensers at Kmart. They're only about $3, I think. And it's got the little rod here, so you can pop them on there. And I was actually pretty keen on this initially. I bought three or four of them, and I'm not gonna be able to get it back in for the video. <laughs> it's a little bit embarrassing. Uh, once you get them in, you would load them up and use this edge to actually dispense the washi tape. The thing that I found is that the dispenser side of it kind of wrecks the tape over time because you've always got this bit here drying out. It would flick up, not to mention you get that serrated edge every time you cut your washi. And I just wasn't a fan. So I said to Shane, I need to find another system. <laughs> so my next system was these little storage containers that I have sitting in my top drawers. And I thought, well, that would fit the washi really well. So I did start and I loaded them all up and I had them in there. And I just, again, looked at Shane and said, I, I don't know, I, I, it works, it's tidy, but I just I want something that showcases them a bit better. I want something that I can put away if I need, but I can pull out and looks pretty on the table as well. So thank you Kmart again. I stumbled across this little unit. Now I'm pretty sure this is a jewelry case or something similar. Um, it's got a mirror in the bottom and I thought this was the perfect height for washi. So I am gonna look at getting some kind of dividers put in it to hold the washi in place. But for now, this has become my new washi storage. So I'm really happy with this as my storage option, but I did very quickly realize that I think I might need some more washi tape. <laughs> it's definitely empty and it's kind of embarrassing how <laughs> I told you, I am not a shopper. I am not someone who buys excessive amounts, but now I feel like I have to, I feel like I have to 
I have to fill the box. In fact, I have to fill both the boxes that I bought for this because I bought two. So I need more washi tape. So it's a good thing that Hobby Hoppers decided to send me a little bundle of goodies. They have sent me this great little collection of washi tape. So let's have a look because I haven't really explored this box yet. I've been saving it for this video. So we've got this gorgeous one here. Very arty, I like it. I can add that to my collection. Oh, this one's pretty. Nice little gold dots on that one. Definitely we'll be using that one. A nice simple gold washi. Definitely good to have some gold. And we've got these two that are just some nice colored stripy ones. Very pretty. Oh, then we've got this pretty pink one. Very nice. Just a nice simple purple. You will have noticed that purple is one of my colors at the moment that I've been using a lot. This one's interesting. It's like a marble, which is really cool. Like a marble effect. And this one, oh, Moscow. Moscow, you'll love this one, Moscow. This one is a little cute cats. Look at that. Cute little cats. Then we have scratch and sniff. Scratch and sniff. All right, well, you know that I have to open it because you have, it's like a rule when you get something scratch and sniff, you have to sniff it right away, right? Watch me totally fail. Oh, here's Moscow. Hi, Moscow. Come here. Hello. Hello. Did you see the cats? Did you see? Look, look. Your up here. Look. Do you like it? No, don't crawl over the desk. Sit down. Oh, do you like the pretty kitties? Yeah. Do you want to sniff it? Are you trying to help me? Because you can see that I am desperately failing at this, at opening, at opening a simple pack. <laughs> Scissors, I need scissors. Oh, Shane, you picked the wrong time to steal my scissors. This is actually embarrassing. This should not be that hard to open. And you know that Shane's gonna keep all this footage just to make me look stupid and probably just gonna fast forward it to highlight exactly how long it took me to open this. It's open. <laughs> oh, it's not. There we go. Okay, we're in. We're in. Ooh, that smells nice. What do you think, Moscow? Smell. Smell? Mmm, they smell nice. They smell pretty. You taken over. Hey, you found your spot. Very nice. Okay. Well, that's what, where are you going? I've got some other toys for you in a minute. <laughs> it's all right, just take your time. Oh, I know, I know. All right, come here. Come here. Have a cuddle. Here we go. So we also have these really cute little paper clips. And these clips, these are awesome. I've actually been wanting some of these. They're just... Oh, Watch me fumble this. They're just cute. Really like them. They're going straight in the top drawer. So that definitely helps increase my washi collection a bit. Thank you, Hobby Hoppers. Great, awesome stuff in there. So let's pop that away. Now, Moscow, you are gonna love this next stuff. Look at this. Look at this. This is from Chasing Planner Peace. They also sent me some goodies and they sent me, oh, this cute little kitty paw correction tape. So it's a nice little nifty thing. So that's really cool. They also sent me this cute kitty pen. Do you like it, Moscow? Do you like it? 
this cute kitty pen. Yeah. And stay positive. That's for you. That's for you. Maybe you can put it on your Instagram. Yes, he has his own Instagram. A little bit sad. You like it? What do you think? Oh, the purring. Can you hear that? You like it. And they also sent me these clear post-it notes. So these clear post-it notes, I think is actually a really cool idea because you can put them in your planner and make notes on them and still see everything underneath. What do you think, Moscow? Mm -hmm. All right, time to go. So while I've got my planner out, I also bought some goodies to use on the printable version of this planner. So this is my 2021 planner and it's the quill bound version that you can buy on my website, but I also have a printable version. And so I wanted to try using the printable version to create a few other types of planner. I bought myself a hole punch that I can use for a ring binder. So this does the six holes so that I can put it in a planner cover. So that'll be cool. I also bought myself some discs. So you probably would have seen um, kind of like the happy planner style planning where you can use discs. So I'm actually going to, in a video coming up, I'm going to use um, the discs and a disc hole punch to create a disc version of the planner, which means you can pull pages in and out. You can mix and match it with it planners that you already have, all that kind of stuff. So you can actually do that with the printable version. I just wanted to give it a go for myself. So I'm going to be doing that in a future video. And finally, I am very excited because my new stickers have arrived. Have a look. We have this set of stickers for plant lovers that you can color in. We also have this cute set of cats to fill up your planner. And I've even got these little hands so that you can make them hold something in your planner. Then there's the Valentine set and you can actually get a free sample of this on my website if you want to print one yourself to see what they're like. Otherwise, you can buy the set of these that are ready to pop straight in your planner. And finally, the 2021 set. Now, these actually aren't dated, but they match the artwork that you'll find in the 2021 planner. So just like each month has a different theme, you have a matching sticker set to go with that theme. And they are all available on my website. I will put a link in the description below. While we're on the topic of stickers, I did receive another special gift from Moby & Co, who are another Australian company, and they sent me this cute little collection of stickers. They obviously know that I have a cat and there's just a bunch of really cute ones here. Oh, Moscow is going to love those. They are funny. Moscow has his own planner, so he can, he can have some special stickers in his as well. So lots of fun little stickers here. Thank you, Moby & Co, for these. I'm definitely going to use these in my planner. And I could not resist these gorgeous little page marker sticky notes from Kmart. And finally, I was sent these color sheets. Now you might be wondering what color sheets are. I was wondering what color sheets are when they were sent to me by Viviva. So these are packaged really cute for a start, but they are actually watercolor. So this is a watercolor palette and it's actually the watercolor paints on the sheets. So it's really thin really small, really compact, so you can take it anywhere with you. And you can basically wet this and do watercolor painting from this. So these are actual paints. So there's heaps of different options. So I will test these out properly in a future video. For now, I just wanted to give you a quick look because I do think it's a very interesting concept and very clever. So I hope you had fun looking at my new craft toys. I don't really know why Someone would want to just watch someone else buy things, but apparently that's a thing. Well, you tell me. Tell me, was this video actually interesting? Do you want me to never do one of these again? Or do you want to see more of this kind of thing? And I would actually love to see your craft space. So I have a free Facebook group. I will pop the link in the description below and you can join that and you can post a photo of your space, whether it's all nice and pretty or whether it's just a big mess. I would love to see it either way. Um, so please post it in the group. We would love to meet you and love to see your creative space. For more videos from me, please remember to like this video, subscribe and turn on your notifications. 
And please leave a comment below if you have any questions about any of the things I've shown you, or maybe I forgot to tell you how to put together part of this and you want to know, just leave a comment below and I will get back to you. Thanks for joining me. Here is another video that I think you'll love. Bye.